Good night, everybody. It is your brother Jehoshaphat, and we are back in the temple, family. So we we got our research up, and you know how we do things. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for paying attention. Peace and blessings be upon you all in Yeshua's precious name, for he is the Lord. All glory given to your Father, for he is the only one who could ever be worthy. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Now, now, family, now this studies is the, the first chapter of Moses. It is, family. So we're going to go. It's only one fourth of Moses life. But this one fourth of Moses life, you know how good your father is to me and you know how good he is to you, family. So this time we'll just be going over his life. That's all we're going to do here right now. You know how we do it. Sit back, enjoy, listen. And you know how your brother is, family. If it's not important, I'm sorry. I'm not going to sit there and give you 20 pages of something that doesn't mean anything, family. Let's stick to what means something to you in your life, how it affects you in your life with the story, family. So all the big stuff, if it's something miscellaneous, something so small and minute that it really doesn't bring anything to me, I probably wouldn't even put it in the story, family, because we got to get through it. You know what I'm saying? Now, the next time we pick up these lessons, the lesson of uh, the first the first chapter of Moses, family, it's only one fourth. It's only one fourth of Moses' life. It's only, I'm picturing, let's just say one fourth. And this one, like I said, we'll go over this, the his comparison. One fourth, I can't say it's complete life because on the other ones, we did it from the point to where they was a, a person until they died. But Moses, he got a big story. You said he got a whole lot to tell. You know what I'm saying? You you take the books of Moses and it's more bigger than Genesis. And people like staying away from Genesis because they say, oh, that's too much. That's too much. That's a lot. That's a lot. So let's go ahead and, and so we'll go over the story. Next time, God, let me pick up the series again. We'll go over all the different lessons, the 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 on top lessons and the lessons underneath. And then, you know, your God, he's going to throw his revelations in there. So you get the three family, you get the, the surface lessons, the underground lessons, and then you get the revelations from God. I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting on God just like you. Is. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting on God for the record. But I know he's going to bring it to me tomorrow. Family, he always does for your father is a great father for he is worthy. So let's go ahead and get into this. OK, now. Moses, Moses, uh, Moses, father name was Amram. And Moses' mother name is Jahad, Jahadbad, who who also gave birth to Moses' older brother Aaron. The life of their father was 137 years when he was called to stand stand with God. Now at this time, all of the household of the children of Israel dwelt in the land of the surrounding towns, like after the time when Joseph. I'm sorry, the time passed and Joseph and all the elders, his brothers, the 12 tribes of, of Israel, the generations died, but the children of Israel were still in the land and God was good to our people because the they grew were still, I'm sorry, family, I'm sorry. God made them fruitful and increased abundantly and they grew exceedingly mighty because the land was filled with them okay let me stop right there and see if i get some some good pigmentation of um our people over there and the, um i'm not advertising over here that's how I, that's how i just was i'm not advertising family i'm not advertising yet you know how your brother is i like my my pigmentation to be on point so you can get um a little visual of what's being said. You'd be like, wow, those are a lot of pictures. Yeah. Okay, let's just leave it right here. Because I ain't got no good pigmentation of them. Okay, let's go back. Where did we fall? Okay, um... Fruitful and increase abundantly, and they grew exceedingly mighty because the land was filled with them. Now, after Joseph, Pharaoh died, it arose a new Pharaoh that gave, that grew to power and did not know Joseph. And he feared the children of Israel and the the new king swirtily and thought this would stop them from multiplying and by him being shrewdly, gri grieving 
and and growing greater in number because he's seen that the Israelites was more greater than the Egyptians and feared that they would turn and fight with their enemies and fight against Egypt. So he set over them taskmasters to to I'm sorry, taskmasters to over overwork them to it and afflict them with burdens the children of israel were servants to the pharaoh's court and built for him two cities potom and ramos and the more they afflicted now the pharaoh had in in heart no love when he dealt with the children of israel and the pharaoh made their lives hell and they were bitter with hard bondage and mortar and brick. I'm pretty sure it's back this way. Mortar, mortar and brick. Let's see. We're going to make sure that we don't time out on this one, family. For real, we're going to make sure God is good. Was it going back this way? It was still some more in there. I'm not advertising. I'm trying to get to the picture. <laughs> Let me try this hand. Nope. But like, fat, what are you doing? <laughs> hold on, hold on, family. I'm sorry. Like, fat, what are you? What are you? What are you doing? I'm not deliberately, hey, 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 tell YouTube what's up. You know what I'm saying? Because they took all my editing stuff away. I can't even get down like that no more, family. Your brother can't even get down like that. They done took everything away just to, to hold people back, family. That's a damn shame. Y'all done had all that for all that time. Now y'all just want to up and take stuff away? Okay. Like, dang, fat, that is sure a lot of pictures you got there. Brother, you sure got a lot of pictures, brother. I know, family. I wish I had a dang computer so I could do it right and have the right equipment and everything. You know how easy this would be for me? Okay, um, brick and mortar, because that's what they that's what they was stressed out. He was the Pharaoh was on them making make them bricks, family. Make them bricks. You know what I'm saying? And he was so cold making these bricks and they had to if they didn't make these bricks to expand the empire i bet you he beat the heck out of them i bet you he beat them down okay now um what do we leave off okay pharaoh made their lives their lives no we said that okay uh bondage and mortar and brick and all and all the work of the field so they were whipped and beaten the children of israel down so the pharaoh talked with their the midwives and told them to kill all the sons of the people and to spare the girls but the midwives feared god okay where is the midwives at oh right here the midwives okay now the midwives they feared god and did not do what the pharaoh told them to do they did not kill the son the sons of Israel. So you got to imagine at this time, family, the older, the all of Joseph's older brothers, the 12 tribes of Israel, they all died, family. Even the Pharaoh that Joseph used to serve, even he died. And this, this king right here, he was dealing real shrewdly with the children of Israel because he feared them, family. That's why he made their lives a living hell, family. Always busting their they, they knuckles on the concrete trying to get something. Okay, now... Back to these midwives. Now, we know the story about the midwives. Those was the people, those was Pharaoh's doctor ladies who were supposed to kill all the firstborn babies because the Hebrew women were supposed to bring in those babies to be slaughtered. Sad, right? Okay, but the midwives feared God and did not do what the Pharaoh told them to do. They did not kill the sons of Israel. So the midwives were, were called in by the Pharaoh. We got another picture of them. Nope, that's the best one we got. Okay, and, and he asked them, why? Why they did why did you not kill the male children? And they blamed the Hebrew women by saying they never brought them in. 
the men to be executed, the children. And for this reason, God dealt well with the midwives. And once more, again, God blessed the, the tribe of Israel and they grew. They multiplied in the land of Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh decreed throughout all the lands of Egypt that the sons will be thrown into the river. So, Johadbah conceived and bore a son and could, could not hide him because the boy grew. So, she looked... She she took a ark of bristles, covered it with pitch and put young Moses and laid it in the reeds by the river. Now, at this time, the Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to to bath and her her maidens was walking along the riverside and they saw the ark among the reeds and the Pharaoh's daughter sent her her servant to receive it. And when she opened it, she saw a child and beheld the baby wept and compassion fell over her. And she knew he was one of the, the Hebrew children. So Pharaoh's daughter called for the, the boy's mother, the, the nurse whom, whom she paid the boy a way. I mean, she put, paid the mother a wage to her so she took the boy away with permission from the princess to nurse the baby and he grew and she brought him back to pharaoh's house to the daughter of the pharaoh so she called his name moses because i drew you out of the water now time passed in the land of egypt i gotta make sure we stay on time family Got to make sure we stay on time up over here. Make sure. Oh, that was a picture right there. My bad. You see, oh boy, he got both the whips. He was beating them down, family. Beating them down, family. Okay, now, you know that was your ancestors, right? Now, so they called his name Moses because I drew you. Okay, we said that. Okay, they passed. Okay. Okay, now, passed in the land of Egypt, and Moses grew as a man, and he went out to see the afflictions and he seen an Egyptian beaten a Hebrew on on one of his brethren and he looked to his left and he looked to his right and he saw there was no one watching and he killed him and he hid his body in the sand. Okay, do I got something showing that? That was the midwives right there. Another picture of the midwives. Nope, we ain't got nothing going back this way. Okay. Hold on, family. I'm sorry. You know your brother. You know your brother. Okay, Moses. That was it right there. When he caught him, when he caught him slipping. That's the that's the best that's the be the best pigmentation of Moses catching that other dude. No, I can't even say that. I don't even really got one, but this is the best I can do for it. Okay, now Pharaoh, so so work with the pictures too, family. It's telling the it's telling the story, but I wish I could have had got this is the, all that I could get. You know what I'm saying? The, I'm trying to tell you, family. I drew you out the water. Now time passed in the land of Egypt, and Moses grew as a man, and he went out to see. Okay, we read that. Let's move on. Now, can you believe this is what preaching actually is, family? Telling the stories like the apostles did. This is all preaching is. That's what they did. They told the stories of the Bible. They told you why they loved God. They told you why they believed in Yahshua. They told you, family. Okay, now. Now. I'm on the, wrong page. the next day, he went out amongst his brothers and he seen the two hebrew men fighting and he said to them who 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 did this this wrong why are you why are you striking your companion and the men said who made you a judge and a prince over us are you going to kill me like you killed the egyptian and when he heard this words fear fear came on him him because he feared that the Pharaoh would get word of these matters and sought to kill Moses and he fled. 
Because he did, family. He fled after that. He got on. Because he already knew what time it was, family. Now, I know the best one I can get a picture of just him and Moses' wife at the uh, at the well. That's the closest. You know what I'm saying? That's the closest pigmentation I can actually get of it. Okay, hold on, family. Let's drop Moses off with his wife. Okay, that, that, yeah, that's Moses' father-in-law and his two sons and his wife. So, yeah, we good right there. Okay, now, Pharaoh would get word of these matters and sought to kill Moses. And he fled and the face of, he fled the face of the Pharaoh and traveled to the land of Midian. And he sat at a well. Now, the priests of Midian had seven daughters and they came to water the flock. Okay, I know I got a better. I know I got a better picture than that, family. Hold on, family. I know I got a better picture. And if it get broken up, you know we gonna come back, family. I might have to invest invest more time in it than what I'm all what I've already put into it. And it's been so much time, family. But if we have to come back, you know your God is good. You know what I'm saying? You know your God is good. Okay, now back to. Where is Nah, I thought I had it, family. Okay, if I go over that picture and I see them at the well, uh, I'll show you the, the pigmentation of it so you could see the picture of it so you could you could be like, okay, well that's what he was talking about. But I don't see it on there, family. So that was the best one that I have seen. Yep, your brother thumbs is hurting. <laughs> Flicking them fast. But it's good. We good. So I'll just leave it right there since I couldn't find it. Okay, now feeding the flocks. Now the shepherdess, they tried to they the sheep herders tried to drive them away. But Moses stood up and he helped and he helped water the 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 father's flock. Now when they came by him to their father's house and and real, he asked them, How have you finished so early today and they they told they told him the egyptian who who had delivered them from the hands of the sheep herders and helped water your flocks and he called for moses and broke bread and ate with him then moses and moses was content with the man and lived with him the priest gave him his daughter zeth Parath, Zeparath, to wife, and gave him a son, and Moses named him Gershom, with which means stranger in a foreign land. Now the time passed, and by and in the land of Egypt the king died, and the children of Israel groaned because the bondage, and they cried out to the God of heavens and earth, and the the most High heard their cries and remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he looked upon them and he acknowledged them. Okay, now, anything that I will be missing out of here or I didn't think that was important. No, you got you you got it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we, we're going through the story pretty, pretty fast. But like I said, all things that are important are brought forth. Is we missing anything in there that's important? Okay, he got married, family. He left. He was scared, family. He left, family. He as soon as he killed that other Egyptian, he got on, family. He booked it, family. And then look how God shined on him because he had to spend at least like. Okay, if Moses, if Moses was 40 years, 40 years old when he when he when when he was in Egypt, family, let's just say he was 40 years old. Now he must have spent at least a good 10 years with his wife. He had to, family, before he went back to uh, Egypt again. Okay, let's keep on going. So it was, it was it was a good chunk. It could be 10 or 20 years, family. It was a good chunk of time, family, that had passed. He It said that he was content, family. 
He was loving his life. You know what I'm saying? He was loving his life living. He had his wife. You know what I'm saying? He had his, 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 Moses really never had a daddy like that besides from the Pharaoh family. Come on now. And now the Pharaoh want to kill him. Now, okay, now let's move on. Now Moses was out in the land of Jethro tending his father's, his father-in-law flock. And he, he, he held them back through her rod called the mountain of God. Okay. It's the most funniest part. Funniest part to me of, well, one of the funniest stuff. I've told you the Bible is very interesting. Just the stories itself, family. It's very, it tickles my fancy bones, family. You know what I'm saying? It just does, family. I'm sorry. It does. <laughs> Moses, everything about him, everything that he did. <laughs> Okay, I don't see it, family, and I ain't gonna spend too much time waiting on it to see if I can find it. No, nope, but I don't, I don't, I don't see it. <sighs> no, nah, I don't see it, family. So I ain't gonna waste too much time on it. You know how your brother is. Okay, now and and the Lord appeared to Moses through. Yeah, that's man. I gotta find that one. I just I knew it was over there. Hold on, family. Hold on. You know your brother. Hold on, family. Hoping everybody has a good night tonight. If you catch this in the daytime, hope everything is good with you. Peace and blessings be upon you all. And Yeshua, precious name, for he is our Lord, our master, and our savior. We gotta we gotta depend on him more. We gotta trust in him more. We gotta lean on him more. Just gotta bring it to Jesus, family. Why sit there and stress on that stuff? Bring bring all that to Jesus, please. Can you do that for your brother? Bring all that, family, all that. Bam. Okay, here we go, family. Okay, the reason why it tickles my fancy bone that made me laugh is because Moses was nosy, family. He was nosy, family. He was nosy. You got to imagine Moses was being nosy. And God was looking through the fire and he was looking at Moses being nosy because that, that bush drawed his attention, family. Moses was sitting up over there, really sitting there thinking like, what the? When he seen this bush, family, he was sitting there like, what? why is it not burning up? How is it on fire, but the fire is not going away? I don't even see smoke. You know what I'm saying? So Moses was over there being mighty nosy. He was, family. He was, family. And stuff like that, it just makes me laugh, family. It does, family. Okay, let's get back into this. Okay, now, it was called the mountain of God, and the Lord appeared to Moses through a flame of fire in the midst of both of a bush. So he he looked and behold, and the bush was with within fire, but the bush was not consumed in the fire. So Moses went to go to see this great sight. Why does this bush not burn all the way up, being it was a fire? Now the Lord seen him turning aside to look. And he called out to Moses from the midst of the burning bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. God told him to take off your sandals off because this place where you stand on holy ground. And where's my other picture? Hold on. Leave it right there. So I don't time. I'm trying my best not to time out family ground. And he told them he was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses was scared, and he hid his face from God, and God told him, I have seen the oppression of my people who are in, in Egypt and have heard their cries, and I am, and I know their sorrows, so I, I come to deliver them out of the land of Egypt and bring them to a land good large land flowing with milk and honey a place of i'm sorry 
of milk and honey, a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Prezites, the Hevites, the Jebusites. They cry, they cry of your, your people, come to me. And I see the oppression forced on them by the Egyptians. I want you to go down to Egypt to talk with the Pharaoh that you may bring my children out of the land of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? to tell the Pharaoh and tell him to set my people free. So Moses doubted himself before the eyes of God. Because he did, family. He did, family. He doubted himself before the eyes of God. He did, family. He did. Okay. Moving to the next one. But God told Moses not to fear and that he would be with him and... And the mountain where he stood, he would serve God on this mountain. After he brought his people out of Egypt, Moses asked God, what shall he say? His name is to the children of Israel. And God said to him, I am. That's what you shall say. My name is I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of of Isaac and Abraham. OK, I'm sorry, family. Jacob, I'm sorry. This is my name and it will be a memorial to all generations. Go to. Go to the elders of Israel and say to them. I am the God of your fault, your forefathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I visited you and have seen your affliction in the land of the Egyptians, and I will bring you to the place of, of milk and honey. Let me show you our land real quick, family, because a lot of you don't think, a lot of you black folks, <laughs> y'all don't even know that y'all got a land. Okay, I know they stole everything from y'all. I know this, family. I know this, but take a look at your land. It's been taken from you, hijacked, and it's... Family, it's your land. It's where you come from. It's the land that was promised to your people that it seems like every time we be disrespectful to God, we get kicked out, family. We get kicked out every time, family. We get enslaved. Either God promised to bring us all back to our his cho our cho our chose our land, family. Inside of our board. He that's a promise, family. That is a promise, family. I don't care where you live in, you of descendants of my people. He promised to bring us back. But every time we start disrespecting our father, I think I passed it up. Every time we start disrespecting our father, he start kicking me, kicking us out again, family. Kicking out. What, is what we going to be enslaved this time? What? What? We enslaved? What, what is it? Nebuchadnezzar? What is it? Who, who is it? Who is it, family? Enslave your dang people. Okay. Uh, where is it? Got to be coming up close. Bam. Don't you love it? Your land. But I got a bigger picture of it hold on family bam look at your land family doesn't it look beautiful look at the land of the canaan family that's your place between egypt and mesopotamia don't get these people maps all twisted up family this is your land family be proud of where we come from family that's our that's our business as long as we can act right with god family that's our place that's our land do you know how big that place is family okay now let's let's keep it going Okay, I'm um, okay. We said that. Okay, memorial of all. Okay, we said that too. Okay, we good. Elders of Israel. Okay, you know your father is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, we did that. Okay, cool. Then. Okay, now seeing your affliction. Okay, we did that too. I promise. Here we go. I will bring you to this place of milk and honey that I promised to your fathers. Then they will heed your voice, and you and the elders will go. To the king of the Egypt of Egypt and tell him the God of the Hebrews, let his people go off on a three day journey into the wilderness that they might sacrifice to me that the Lord their God and told Moses that he will not let you go by the by the mighty hand of his hand so i will stretch out my hand and strike egypt with all my wonders which i will show him and then he will let my people go and i will show you 
favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and you shall not leave empty handed. They shall leave with articles of silver, articles of gold, clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. So Moses said, said God, what if they don't believe me or listen? And God asked him, what is it that you have in your hand? And he said, a rod. Okay, let me stop right there, family. You know your brother in these pictures, family. You, you know your brother. Okay, where is it? Bam! Okay, right there. We can just use it for this one or this one right here. No. Yeah, let's just leave it right here, family. No, it's right there. Okay. Okay, now, um, hey, okay, what, what you got? What, Moses, what you got in your hands? Son, what you got? And God told him to cast it to the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses ran away from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he did. So he caught the snake by, the, by his tail and the snake turned back and to the rod. God told, I'm sorry, the rod. God did this so the people could believe that the God of their, their fathers appeared to you. Now put your hand in in your bosom. Okay, let me stop right here real quick, family. Let me stop real quick. Bam. Okay, now in your in your bosom. And when he took he took it out, his hand was leopard. Okay, family, this is what leprosy is, family. When Moses put his hand, he Moses is black, family. I hope you know that by now. Now when Moses put his hand inside to his flesh, it became white. White family, you know what I'm saying? It, that's what it became. It became leopard family. Okay, had was was leopard as as snow, but when he put it back into his bosom, it returned by by to the way of his flesh was his flesh was. And and if they did not believe these two signs, then you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. The water you shall take out of the river will become blood on the land. Then Moses said to God, I don't speak eloquent at any time of my life. I, I am slow of speech and slow in tongue. So the Lord said to Moses, who has made God's mouth or the mute or the deaf, the seeing or, and the blind? I am the Lord God made these things. Now go and I will, I will, I'm sorry, I will be your mouth and you will teach and we will teach you what to say. But Moses said to God, oh my God, please send, 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 send by your hand, whomever else you may send. So this made the anger of God kindle against Moses. So Moses told the, the, the Lord about Aaron. Okay, hold on, family. Hold on, family. Oh, you with your brother. I know you. You know, but I got to let you know. Hold on a second. Darn it. I messed up again. Okay, where is Aaron at? I know I got to pick an Aaron family. like oh my god those are a lot of pictures oh my god why so many fat because i want i want to illustrate it right family looking for the leviticus high priest aaron let me say this about aaron if if, if god if god killed you if god killed your children would you still have faith in god that's Aaron for you right there, family. You know what I'm saying? Because God killed both of his sons, family. Killed them, family. Is, is that murder? God murdered them. God killed them, family. So to still have faith with God and God kill your, kill your people. 
Aaron put his life on the line for the Israel. He was disrespectful to God, but then that's the learning process right there, and you get fed up. But Aaron showed enough to put his life on the line for the Israelites. He did for his brothers and sisters. He put his life on the line for his brother, and he still served family. He was. He still served. Okay, where did we live off at? Okay, the serpent. I know we were somewhere where Moses was snitching again. Moses was snitching. Okay, you you hand and and took it by the tail. Okay, we said that. Okay, appeared to you, but the hand. Then okay, we said that. Oh yeah, you know, eloquent. You know Moses did not speak eloquent on speech at all. Family, does that remind you of someone? Okay, now. Life and I and I show a speech. I know you know somebody in your family that don't speak so good. Family, God will use anybody. Okay, now slow in your tongue. So the Lord said to Moses, Who has made okay? We, yeah, we did that. We read that. Okay, I will be your mouth. Okay, but Moses said to God, Oh my God, Lord, please send by your hand whomever else you may send. So so this made the anger of God kindle against Moses. So Moses told the Lord about Aaron, the Levite, and, and how he can speak well. At, at this point, Aaron, the Levite, was coming to see Moses. And when he seen Moses, he was glad in his heart. God said, said you will speak to Aaron and put my words in his mouth, and I will put my words in your mouth. <clears throat> okay, now, and I will teach, I will teach you what to say. And Aaron saw shall be a spokesperson to the people and he shall be a mouth to you and you shall be to him as God and with the rod in your hands you shall show the two signs that I have put before you so Moses went back to his his father and in law and asked him if he could travel back with his brother to see if his brothers in Egypt was still alive so Moses packed up his family and headed back towards Egypt. He took his, his rod of God with him. God asked Moses and Aaron to go to the Pharaoh and tell them, tell him. Hold on, family. And God, no, I don't want to do a good job for my brothers and sisters in, in the story of well, the first part of Moses you know, saying? you know I want to do a good job it's just it's, it's long family so I just ask that you bear with your brother just bear with your brother okay that's that's not nah I need another one No, nah, we ain't gonna sit here and do it all day let's just leave it right here Okay, now the rod, the rod of God with him. God asked Moses and Aaron to go to the Pharaoh and tell him, Israel is my firstborn, so let my people go. If you, if not, I, the God of the of the heavens, will will your sons and your firstborn sons of Egypt, then they, the, then the Lord seen him in the encampment, the in, I'm sorry, the encampment, and sought to kill him. Moses' wife, Zephirah, took a, a rock in her hand and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it to Moses' feet and told him, Surely you are the husband of blood to me. So Moses let his son go. Then she said to him, You, you are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. Then God told Aaron, to go meet Moses in the wilderness. So he met him on the mountain of God. Hold on, family. Let's put Mount Sinai on here real quick. Bam. Okay, now, Moses. Okay, to meet Moses in the wilderness. So he, he met him on the mountain of God. Moses told him all the words of God and all the signs he commanded him. So, so, 
So Moses and Aaron went to the elders and spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses. And all of the children of Israel believed after seeing the marvelous wonders and the signs that God gave Moses to convince the Pharaoh to let his people go into the, the wilderness. And Moses told them that the God of the Hebrews, that God told his people, the children of the Hebrews, to make a feast and to sacrifice to him. Least God kills us by the sword or, or punish, punishes us with the pestilence and the being. Now, being the cruel Pharaoh was, was, he was, asked him, why do you, you take the people away from their work? So that's back to the, the Pharaoh dealing real shrewdly with the children of Israel. You got to imagine, you know what I'm saying? He dealt very treacherous, very roughly, very cutthroat, very conniving with these people. You know what I'm saying? He really did, family. And to him, just like being in America, you born into slavery. You ain't going no damn where. You are my possession. Reminds you, remind you of somewhere, family? Okay, now... So to, to punish the people on the behalf of Moses and Aaron, he, he, he inflicted the Hebrews with taking away the, the straw. So they had to, had, to, had, had to still reach their quotas and find their own straw. And they, they shall keep the, the same work. So the children of Israel cried out, let us go sacrifice to our God. And the Pharaoh, being barbarically savage and cruel, made the taskmasters double the men work to make them suffer more. So the people. OK, let's change up the, pe the paper. I don't want to time out on this family. I told you, family, if we're not able to do all of this tonight, you know how your God is. He is a great God. He is family. He's a mighty God, just and true in all that he does. So we'll be back with this family. But if you're going to stick down with the story of the first part of Moses, you're going to have to sit family and just listen and absorb all this knowledge family. Please absorb this whole story that your brother have before you. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw and the task the taskmasters forced them even more by saying fulfill your daily were basically why they was beating them fulfill your daily your daily quota as when you had straw people use i'm sorry by saying yeah fulfill okay people use these mud these mud bricks made by by mixing the earth you see these mud bricks right here, family? It's easy, family. I mean, it's very easy to make a, a brick structure out of just mud, family. Dirt and water, family. Don't throw no straw or, stru or stubble in it. That's going to make it even harder, that brick, family. Okay, now look at this, family. Look at this. Mud bricks made by mixing the earth with water mixed into a, mo into a mold and drying the bricks in the open air. Straw or fibers that are strong intensifies or adds to the brick. It helps reduce the cracking and are used. Now, these are used to build the walls, the vaults and the dams, the houses for building. So they use these bricks for building materials to expand the empire of Egypt. So the taskmasters beat the children of Israel. OK, let me go to another one. Where is it at, family? Where, where the whip at? We got to put it, bam, on the whip, on the whip, family. Okay, now, of Israel for not making the previous quota for the day. And the children of Israel cried out to the unsympathetic Pharaoh, asking him, why are you dealing with your servants in this manner? And and beat us, and we 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 have no straw to make your, your bricks. For the king, but he said, You are idle and ask me to let you go and sacrifice to your Lord. So get out of my presence. There will be no straw given to you, and you will be beat. If the children of Israel, I'm sorry, 
if you will be beat if you do not meet your quota. You, your sons and your daughters, the children of Israel. So the officers of the children of Israel seen that it was double it was it was doubly fear the people because what the Pharaoh said. And as the people came from speaking to the Pharaohs, they seen Moses and Aaron who waited on the meeting of the king. Okay, where's my good picture at family? Hold on, you know your brother. Why I did this, I should have went and got me a water. Because I'm going to have to take a break and get some water in a minute, family. But y'all won't even know the difference because I'm just going to pause it up. Know that line. Look, you know that land look beautiful. That's your stuff, black man. That's your stuff, black woman. Sister, brother, that's your land. Be proud of your people. We can have it, family. We can have it again. I'm telling you, we can. If we hearken to the most high Yah and what is required of us. Darn it, I don't see it, family. I don't see it. That's all right. Let's keep on going. Okay, now the unsympathetic Pharaoh asking him, why are you dealing with us? Oh, no, we did that. But he said to your, your idol, ask me, okay, no, we did that too. Okay, no, okay, we did that. The meeting of the king did that too. So the people were mad at Aaron and Moses. They was, family. They was mad. They, the people, they was mad like, man, here come Aaron and Moses. Wait, man, where y'all going? Where y'all going? Why y'all got to go talk to, why y'all got to go talk to the Pharaoh, Aaron? What you doing, Aaron? Aaron, Aaron, why you talking to the Pharaoh again? Okay, you know he, you know he tripping. Okay, now look, look, family. <laughs> Oh man, here come Moses again. He want to go talk to the Pharaoh, y'all. Yesterday was hard. It was hard on them, brother. Okay, now look. So the people were mad at Aaron and Moses because they felt they made them look repugnant in the sight of of the Pharaoh. You you know the Pharaoh was very uppity. I mean, he was like Donald Trump for them to say that they felt they, they looked at repugnant, family. You know what I'm saying? So you know it had to be a man like Donald Trump, but it's like Donald Trump with no restrictions. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Donald Trump with no restrictions, family? A black man that acted like Donald Trump family, you know what I'm saying, with no restrictions. And he was born into it, so you know he was savage. Okay, now look. Okay, the sight of the Pharaoh. So Moses asked God, why have you brought trouble to your people? Why have you, have you sent me? You sent me to speak in your name to the Pharaoh, and he does evil to your people. And you have not delivered your people at all. So the Lord told God, I mean, so Moses told God that after he used a strong hand, he will let his people go and by his hand drive them out of the land of Egypt. I am your God. I speak with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God, the mighty, the most high. Any, un, I'm sorry, I am God, the, the most mighty. Any name is the Lord and I know them now it know them to them by my covenant is with them to give them the land of their pilgrimage Canaan which they were strangers and I have heard they their groanings of the children of Israel and I remember our covenant I am the Lord I will bring you you out from under the burden of the Egyptians I will stretch out my arms with a great judgment and will reduce you from bondage and give you the land, the, the land as as an inheritance, as I have swore to your fathers from from anguish of spirit and the cruel bondage of the children of Israel did not heed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did I, what did I Israel did not heed. Moses, when he spoke these words, then the God, then God said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and tell him to let his people out, out 
outside of the city to worship me there. God, God. So Moses told. I'm sorry. Moses told. The Pharaoh, he. No, no, no. The God of heavens, the people have not heard me. How then will the Pharaoh heed me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron and command them once again to tell them to tell the Pharaoh king of Egypt to let his people go and will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Some of y'all want to sing that song Egypt real bad. Y'all want to say just say go ahead say it. I mean Egypt, Egypt. Go ahead, go ahead. Play the song later. Okay, now at this time Moses was eighty years old. Aaron was eighty three years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. That's why I say family. Now when they the first when they came when 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 Moses went away when he ran from Pharaoh. How long was he, he, was he in the land of, uh, where was it, Herbon, Gershon, where was it? You know what I'm talking about, Gershon. When was he in that land, family? He must have been a long time, because look, the first time he's going to talk to the Pharaoh, Moses is 80 years old, family, 80 years old, family, and Aaron is 83 years old, family. They old men, family. Very old men, family. Okay, now at this time Moses was eighty years old. He was family. Aaron was Aaron was eighty three when he spoke to Pharaoh, and the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and took take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent. Okay, let's go back to this one, family. That should warm you up when you pass your native land, family. Every time I pass your native land, you should feel warmthness inside of you. That's your land, sister. That's your land, brother. We're going to get our people together. We're going to get our people acting right. Okay, now, I know I had a better picture than this. And I ain't even worrying about the time, family, because I'm investing and I'm putting my heart and my love into it so you can just indulge in it, family. Chill with your brother. You good. If you here with me now, you are good. I send blessings upon you and your household and your family in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, for he is the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You and your family. Hallelujah. Amen. And I bless your home. Hallelujah. Amen. For he is worthy. The most high Yah and he alone, family. Did I pass the darn picture up again? You see your brother. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay, now called his wife. Okay, now let's jump back. Okay, Lord, and spoke to Moses and Aaron and took your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and it let it become a serpent. So when the Pharaoh before his his servant to show him his rod, but but Pharaoh called his wise men and his sorcerers, the Egyptians, in the same manner with their enchantments, for they drew down the rod and they all so became serpents, but Aaron's Aaron's rod swallowed up the rods of the Pharaoh's of their rods and Pharaoh's heart grew colder and did not listen to Moses and Aaron. So God told Moses. He told he um, I'm sorry, told Moses, go to Pharaoh in the morning and when he goes out to the water. And you shall stand by the river banks to to meet him and the same rod you should. It's, it's crazy. I can sit here and just talk about these pictures and what's happening. It'd be the whole complete story or what I want to really say. But I'm <laughs> OK, now. Bam, there we go. OK, Aaron said to God. So God told Moses, OK, God told Moses to in the Pharaoh in the morning. He was OK. We did that. Go to the water. Okay, you shall stand by the river banks to meet him, and the same rod you show, you sh you show turn into a serpent, and you shall. Sh sh I'm I'm sorry, family, and you shall say to him, the God of the the Hebrews has has said, let my people go serve me in the wilderness. If not, I will strike the waters of the river with my rod and it shall become turned into blood and all the flesh shall die let me stop right here real quick family now 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 family 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 
Now, I'm not one of these people who be doubting the Bible. So if God said he turned that water into blood, I believe everything he said, family. I'm not going to be sitting there doubting God. Hey, it's just red wine. It's just the color red. It's just the sediment. of No, nah, family. No, no, no. That's why people don't ain't got no dang faith. They don't believe the word. They don't believe the word. You know what I'm saying? They sitting here arguing with it. That maybe it meant this. Or maybe it meant that. Or maybe that. No, what if, what if it just meant what the heck it said, family? God said he turned the water into blood, family. That means if you got a cup of that stuff, that is not no dang water. That is blood, family. God said it turned into blood. Your brother Jehoshaphat believes God's word. Hallelujah. Okay, now. But he didn't, brother. It wasn't no blood, brother. It was just the color of the blood, brother. It was just red, brother. Okay, blood and all the flesh and... The fish shall die and stink up the land, and you will die if you drink the water. Then he told Moses and Aaron to strike out, stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, over the pools of the water. Oh, snap. I'm going to let my paper slide, and that's getting me sidetracked on my number. I'm sorry, family. I got to stop. I'm getting sidetracked. And my papers just slid down because all of this is manually written down, family. All of it. And we're on page 10, yeah. We're on page 10. So that must be 11. 13. We'll find it. We'll find it. We'll find it. We're looking for page 11. Hold on, family. Hold on, family. Bam. There we go. Right there. We good. Okay, now, where was that? Where, 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 where did your brother drop at? Pharaoh's heart grew. No, no, no. Okay, he was, Moses was 80. Woo, he was old, family. Okay, the Hebrews go, okay, the waters. I, I will strike. I will I will strike the waters of the river with, with my rod, and it shall become turned into blood, and all of the fish shall die and stink up the land, and you will die if you drink the water. Then he told then he told Moses and Aaron to stretch out your, your hand over the waters of the of Egypt, over the, the streams. Over the rivers, over the ponds, over the the pools of water. I mean, any anywhere, family. Any it, it, it could be a bucket of water. He's still he's turning the blood of the water that they may become blood. And throughout all the lands of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and stone, God wanted to to curse all the waters of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did as God said, and all the waters was turned into blood. The fish. And the river died, and the, the city stunk of the dead all around. So the Pharaoh people could not drink the water. So he 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 called the magicians of the land. Hold up, where my picture for that one? I got that one. It's off that movie. I think 300. You know what I'm talking about, family? Shoot, that was an actual... The movie 300 was actually... <laughs> that really happened, family. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine a black man... I told you who did it and everything, family. His name escapes me right now. But you know your father. He'll bring it back to me in a couple seconds. Where is it at? Okay, fine, fine, fine. It's not important. Just know that the magicians, they couldn't do all of that, family. They couldn't, they couldn't even do all of that, family. They couldn't. They couldn't turn that water back in, in, in that blood back in the water, family. They couldn't do it. They tried. They tried, but that's what happens when you serve face fake I uh fake entities. Okay, now so the Pharaoh people they have no power, and they are but of made of wood and stone. They cannot see our here, family. They cannot see. Okay, the one demons they can see our here, but they ain't got no power like your God. Okay, so the the Pharaoh people called could not drink the water, so. He called the magicians of the land of the, the their enchantments and the Pharaoh's heart grew harder and did not heed to any of the words God gave them. All that water turned into blood, family. All of it. I'm sorry. I messed up. Yeah, I messed up, family. I got to go back. Hold on, family. Darn it. Okay, hold on, family. I messed up. How long have we been going now for? Only an hour? That's not that bad. Okay, if we can just get halfway done over here, I'll be good. Because I would only have to make this into two sides, and I'll be good. 
Okay, now. At this time. Oh, no, we did that. We did that. Okay. The people called not drink. Okay, we did that. Okay, moving on. Nose page ten. Okay, so the Egyptians had had to had to dig all around all around them. They digged around the river to find water, cause they could not they could not drink the water turned into blood. Seven days after God made the river into blood, He spoke to Moses, and and. And and Moses and told him to go to damn that's a good one right there to go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, tell him to let his people go so they can serve their God. But if you refuse to let them go, I will smite all all of the territories with frogs, the rivers. Man, that was the picture I was looking for, family. That was the picture I was looking for, family. But. Hold on, hold on. Let me find my frogs first. Hold on, family. Dang, that was the other picture, family. <laughs> yeah, they was trying all that. Yeah, you can you can try to work your sorcery, but that's not gonna work when you're dealing with a that, a god that has all power. You know what I'm saying? You could try. Bam. Okay, I will Pharaoh and says to them, says the the Lord tells him to let his people go so they can serve the God. But if if you refuse to let them go, I will smite all your territories with frogs, the rivers. Family, that's funny, right? Okay, the river. But you, but if you refuse to let them go, I will smite all your territories with frogs. The rivers will bring will bring forth an abundance with frogs that will go into your houses, into your into your bedrooms, on your beds, into your servants, on your people, into into their ovens, their needling bowls, and they shall come up on your people and your servants and ask them. Moses and Aaron stretched out your hands with the rod over over the streams, over the rivers and the ponds and the streams and cause the frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hands over the water of Egypt and the frogs will come and cover all of the land and the frogs and and the Egyptian magicians could not kill or, or stop the, the plagues of the frogs that overtook all the lands of Egypt. So the Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and asked them to entreat your, your Lord God and ask him to take away these frogs from me and my people. And I will let your people go that they may sacrifice to their Lord. And Moses accepted this honor of saying by by and told the pharaoh told him he would we he would entrench for you intercede for you and your people and ask god to destroy these frogs from your house and your land to return them to the rivers and out of the the city so he said tomorrow and let it be according to your words that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. Hallelujah, family. Hallelujah, family. So the Lord did according to the words of Moses, and all the frogs died from the house, the courtyard, the fields, and they gathered their bodies together in heaps, and, and they stunk in the land of Egypt. Now, now when the Pharaoh saw the relief, he hardened his heart again, family, and did not heed what is that it's right in my face too he did not heed the lord and what he said pharaoh did not st stay true to his word and left god's people so moses told aaron stretch out your your rod and and strike the dust oh hold on family where is it at i just seen it too i just seen it Where is it?
And I'm really trying to find it too, fam. I'm really trying to find it. That's all right. That's all right. I know I gotta have I, I gotta have another one this way. Hold on, family. It's important, family. You gotta visualize these things so you can understand. But what your what your brother tell you? Start reading your words so God can breathe in this knowledge into you, family. It's important, family. Hallelujah, Amen. Bam, that's, that, that, all right, all right, it's cool. We just leave it right here. Family, now, it might, if you put a lice under a microscope, that's what it looks like, family. That's what, that's, what it, that's what it looks like right there, family. Right there, family. Straight up lice, family. Okay, now, go, go. So Moses told Aaron, I mean, sorry, God, people. So Moses told Aaron, stretch out your, stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land so that it may turn into lice throughout all the land. Of Egypt, so he did as Moses told him. Told God and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lice on the people, on the beast of the field. It covered all the dust of the land because lice. Hold on, family. Hold on, family. Is it gonna show the picture where we had the the actual lice eating on the people? Nah, that's all right. I know it's got to be going back more this way. Hold on, family. Hold on. Bam! Because that's what the lights did. Nope, 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 nope. That's more like boils on their bodies. Now, can you imagine this family? Can you imagine him actually touching that ground with God's holy staff and all that dust, family? All that dust turning into them little microscopic little creatures and, and invading all of the Egyptians' body, family. When God said he turned all that dust, do you know how dusty Egypt is, family? Can you imagine how many lice was on them people, family? You can only imagine, family. I bet you it wasn't no, no lice on your people, though. Okay, now, um, the land of Egypt, so he did, and Moses told God to stretch out the dust, to strike, to strike the dust of the earth, and it became lice on all the people and the beasts of the field. Man, what did the animals do? The fact the animals didn't even do nothing to deserve this, family. It's a tragedy. Okay, the field and covered all the dust of the land because lice on, on the land. So the Pharaoh set forth his magicians that they could do nothing to get the lice off of the people and on the on, on out of the land. And they told him that this was the finger of God. So even his, even his people, family, they said, man, this is some powerful stuff right here. This is God right here. How are you going to expect Pharaoh? Pharaoh, how are you going to expect me to stop the finger of God? This is God's doing. Do you think that stopped the Pharaoh family? Even with his, these magicians got power, family. They can do stuff, family. They can do a whole lot of freaky, crazy stuff, family. And even these people are saying, this is God's power and God did this and, and God, God did this. Do you think that stopped the Pharaoh? No, family. No, family. Shrewdly with these people. Now, okay, let's keep going. Okay, they told him that it this was the finger of God, and the Pharaoh's heart grew harder, and still did not heed the the warning of God. Once more, more again, and God told Moses to rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out of the water, and see and say to him, "Thou, thou says the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve me, and if you don't." Let my people go. I will send swarms of flies on you. Okay, hold on, family. Hold on, family. Hold on, family. And the breakdown of the one-fourth, I got to be honest with you. It's not a lot of stuff that I don't understand about it. I don't understand like 5% of the overall. This is like five things in there. Out of all of that stuff that we're going to go over, it's only five, probably three. Let's be real. Three things in there that... God, I talked to him about, and he's going to teach me on those things. Now, I will send swarms of flies on you. And you'd be like, fat, you know all of it, though. 
You know how you, you know how we is. I will send swarms of flies on you and your and your service into your houses and the flies and the swarms shall be all over the land of Egypt. But for my children in the land of Gershon, there will be no swarms of flies. There will be none. So it can it can be known that I am the Lord in the land and I have put a difference between my people and your people tomorrow as a sight shall be and being true to his word the lord did so sending thick swarms of flies came into the houses of the pharaohs and the servants and the land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies okay did those pages get to the next one So Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and, and and said to them, go sacrifice, go sacrifice to your God in the land. But Moses told Pharaoh that it would not be it would be an abomination to sacrifice in the land to our God. If we sacrifice, it will be an abomination. We will go in on three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to to our God as he commanded them. So the Pharaoh had commanded them not to go that far in the wilderness and you are not to travel from away from Egypt. Man, he on them like 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 a parent, ain't he? He on them tough like a mug. He like don't even don't even travel that far away. Okay, in the wilderness, and you are to not travel far away from Egypt and straight slaves, family. I mean, Egypt and Moses told Pharaoh that we will depart from you, and I will intercede to the God of heavens to have the swarms of flies depart tomorrow from you and your servants and from all of your people, but let not Pharaoh deal with us deceitfully anymore and not letting the people and sacrifice. So as God asked of them and the Lord did what Moses had asked of them by removing the, the swarms. What is that? This now, now, now time passed. And Pharaoh's heart had hardened once again and would not let let the people go. So so God made Moses go up to the king of, of Egypt, the Pharaoh, and say this. Say the say, thus says the Lord, go off the go. I'm sorry. The God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may be free to serve me. And if you don't let my people go and you refuse I will let pestilence that it will kill all of the Pharaoh's livestock. Hold on, fam. I just seen that one. Bam. Okay, let my people go and you refuse. I will let pestilence that it will kill all of the Pharaoh's livestock with disease. All, all his donkeys, oxen, camel, cattle, horses, every animal of the field will die. But the children of Israel, none, none of them shall happen to their livestock so God can show you the difference between the two people and God appointed time saying tomorrow will I do these things in the land of Egypt and and the very next day God did as he said he would he brought on on the livestock and God killed all the livestock of Egypt and there was not one of the Israelites livestock was dead So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take for yourselves handfuls of ashes from. See, that's this picture right here. I keep on putting up on right here because I can't find another one. Family, my bad. I'm sorry. But this is the whole this is for this right here. What's saying? I'm sorry. OK, so the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take for yourselves handfuls of ashes from the, the furnace and let Moses scatter it towards the heaven in in the in in the sign of the Pharaoh, in the sight of the Pharaoh and it became fine dust in all the land of Egypt it will cause boils that break out in sores on the people and animals in the land of Egypt okay hold on bam right there family 
Soon as soon as family, soon as he 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 took that ash, family, and then he threw it up in the air in front of the I mean, like soon as he threw it up in the air in front of the, the Pharaoh, they start breaking out, family. They was all on that ugh. Remember that ugh ah I was on last night with the old man. Ugh ah ooh ah ooh ah my feet oh my feet. I mean all the way down to their feet, family. They couldn't even put on them sandals, family. They couldn't even put on them sandal Nikes, family. They couldn't, family. Everything, family. Bam, just like that. As soon as he threw that dust right in the air. Bam, it was just like that. I was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> okay, now the, okay, the Lord of the Egypt, it was called, it will cause boils that break out in sores on all of the people and the animals in the land of Egypt. So they took the ashes from the furnace and, and stood before the Pharaoh and scattered them to the winds in the sight of the Pharaoh. And it, and it causes the people to break out to break out so the pharaoh called for his magicians they could not stand before moses because of the boils but the lord hardened his heart and he did not heed the lord's warning he couldn't even he couldn't even call his his magicians and sorcerers out they couldn't even make it family they had to call in sick family because bam that's what god to do to you bam <laughs> Okay now, warning. <laughs> okay now, the Lord warning, just like he he told Moses. So God made made rise, him rise early in the morning and stand before the Pharaoh and say, "Thus says the Lord God of the of the Hebrews: Let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time, I will send all of my plagues to your very heart and on your servants and all of your people, so you can know their." is none like me on the face of this earth hallelujah 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 and if i if i sent pestilence it will kill all of your people of on the face of the earth so indeed i have raised you up for this very purpose that i may sh i may show my power in you and my name may be declared and this is what god told the pharaoh family he told him this he told this is what God told the Pharaoh, and he still don't believe. Okay, now, I may show my power in you, and my name may be declared on the earth as your as you exalt yourselves against my people, that you will not let them go. So beyond tomorrow, about the same time, I will cause the very heavens to have very hell, heavy hell. Okay, hold on, family. I think I've seen this one going back this way too. But if I hit the other videos, I went too far. Okay, where is the fire mingled with ice? What is it? Blood, fire mingled with ice? It's just not hell, family. You know what I'm saying? It's just not hell. It's like fire, blood, mingle. It's like fire. It's like it's like fire, blood, and ice. If you can imagine what that would look like with Moses is telling them what's gonna happen to him. You know what I'm saying? It's just not them little ice balls you see falling out the sky. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's more than that, family. Whatever came out that sky it could kill you. You know what I'm saying? It could kill you, family. Okay, that's different than having a snowball bust you in the back of your on top of your head, family. Whatever those rocks are, mingle with fire. What is it? Fire, blood. Only God could do something like that. Only He could mix fire, blood, and ice together and throw it at you. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Okay, now. Let's keep going, family. Okay, they could not stand before... Okay, we did that. We said that. Okay, okay. he rose early in the morning to tell Pharaoh this, but Pharaoh ain't trying to hear it, family. I will send all of my... Pla did we jump? But the Lord hardened his heart, and I'll just go right here. And he did not heed the Lord warning, just like, just like he told Moses. So God made him rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all of my plagues to you, very heart, and your servants and all your people, so you, you I'm sorry, people, so you can know there is none like me on the face of the earth. If I, if I sent pestilence, it will kill all of your people. All for the face of the earth, so indeed I may raise you up. For, yeah, we did this, this very purpose that I may show your power in 
in you and your name may be declared in the earth as you exult yourself against my people that you may not let them go. So behold, tomorrow about the same time, I will cause the very heavens to have very heavy hell. Man, where is my hell at, family? I want you to see this fire mixed with blood, mixed with ice. Didn't even think that was possible, huh, family? Didn't even think it was possible. Your, your father, he's amazing. He does the impossible. And he's going to show you that there is, he, God is going to personally show you in your life that there is nothing impossible for him. You might think it'd be impossible for you, but it's not impossible for him. So if you tap into that of your faith, building your faith on that, then nothing will be impossible for you, family. Family, I'm trying to tell you, family. No, I don't think I got it, family. I don't think I got that one. And that's not even close to it because that's the tablets. No, I thought I had it. Maybe it was on that other one, family. Nope, if I go that far, that's too far. No, I thought I had it, family. I'm not just sitting here staring at, if I sit here and stare at this screen too long, my eyes start hurting. Or the paper either, family, or the paper either. And I'm not tripping off at the time. I'm not. Enjoy this, family. Just sit back with your brother. Whew, I was flicking that fast in the mud. So I guess that's the best one we're going to get on it. Is the, I don't like that little kitty picture of it. I think that's too far. So, so the hell, so the hell to run down as this time, this never seen, it never has been seen in the land of Egypt since the founding until now. So gathering your livestock that you might have in your fields for the hell shall come down and kill anyone that is out man and animal. So the people who feared the words of the Lord made his servant flee to the house, but those who did not regard the words of the Lord they left their livestock in their field and then Moses stretched out his hands towards the heavens that they may be hell in all of the land of Egypt and the land and the Lord sent thunder and hell and fire darting to the ground and he rained hell on all the land of Egypt so there was fire mingled with hell so heavy that there has not been seen until now and it hell struck throughout the land it broke every tree struck all the herbs and killed both man and beast but gershon were the children of israel there was no hell and pharaoh called forth moses and aaron and said to them i have sinned i have sinned this time your lord is righteous my me my i'm sorry righteous my and me <laughs> that didn't make no sense. Me and my people are are wicked. And treat your God, the Lord, that there may not be any more thundering in hell, for it has been enough. I will let your people go and will hold them no longer. And Moses told the Pharaoh, as soon as I have gone out the city, I will spread out my, my hands to the Lord and all the thunder will cease and there will be no more hell. So you can know that this earth belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And I, 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 and I now, and I know that you will not get far. The Lord God, the flicks and the barley was struck for the barley.